Hi, I'm Lucas T. Shen, licensed architect in Livingston, Montana. I'm William Hicks, licensed architect in Litchfield, Minnesota. Today we're going to continue our series, uh, three-part series on doors with you know common sizes on doors. So today, good architecture means knowing the common dimension of doors and where they go. So as you know in a house, not all the doors are the same size. Sometimes you have a smaller door to go into potentially a smaller room. Sometimes you have a larger door to go into a larger room. So let's review some of the common sizes of doors throughout a house. In the bathroom, usually we start with a two foot, four inch door or 28 inch door. Now this is a standard door and this does not take into account any sort of extra width you may need for a wheelchair or for universal design. A closet. A closet can range pretty dramatically in the overall width. We can start with a minimum of one foot six inches 18 inch would be your smallest standard size door and you can go up to probably uh, two foot six inches and then it's usually a multiple of the two foot six inches usually you don't see anything larger than two foot six for a closet door on a bedroom we like to have two foot eight on older houses a lot of times it would be a two foot six door everywhere. But it seems to be that uh, most of the time we're seeing this wider variation of doors, two foot eight being on a bedroom. And two foot eight is kind of a minimum for a bedroom. On the exterior, if it is a standard eight foot high wall, most of the time your door ends up being about three feet wide. You need to have one three foot door on every new home that you build now uh, as a just a general requirement. Right. Your main exit door has to be three feet three foot wide. Plus you're moving furniture in and out. Come on. Yeah, you gotta have the room. Yeah, there's a lot of function involved in right. this sort of decision. So, you know, a lot of times you'll increase the size of your bedroom door if you've got a specific type of piece of furniture that you have to move in and out, or you may do a <laughs> double door from the outside. Right. A lot of times will specifically have doors that open, a double door open uh, in the basement so that you can move furniture exactly. into the basement yep. because you can't get it down the stairs on the inside of the room. Uh, <laughs> One thing to remember about bathrooms and closets and whatnot, it's really odd when I see plans where an interior door is larger than the door that accesses that room. So don't do that. Just be cautious of that. Yeah, absolutely. If you needed a three foot bedroom or a three foot bathroom, bathroom door, door, and you better make that bedroom door three foot exactly. as well. And you better have a clear three foot exits path outside the building. Right. It doesn't make any sense otherwise. Right. Um, ADA doors is you know Americans with Disabilities Act is a whole nother conversation right but you need to have 32 inches clear and we can get into that another time right uh, so these are generally not for ADA compliance right. so now let's talk a little bit about um, some of the thicknesses associated with doors there's two basic thicknesses and, and yep. give or take three overall thicknesses so on your interior bathroom and closet a lot of times we'll stick to um, if they are six foot eight inches high or seven foot high, right. those will be inch and three eighths thick. Uh, most of the time on the same height for six foot eight inches or seven, seven foot high door, you will do an inch and three quarter on the exterior door. Right. 
a lot of times we're doing custom homes and most of the time in those homes they want the doors to be higher seven foot seven foot six eight foot and it's nice on taller doors to have a thicker feel to the door otherwise it can kind of feel very wobbly because right. it's a lot of meat on that door uh, for such a long style as we talked about in the last video it also helps to keep the door from twisting or warping over time right right yeah absolutely uh, so you know we can do inch and three quarter to two and a quarter inch thick on our interior doors um, that are eight foot high and then on our exterior doors we definitely go up to two and a quarter inches thick on our eight foot exterior doors <laughs> definitely uh, you end up having a really tough time finding door hardware if you go thicker than two and a quarter inches certainly it can be done but Companies like MTech, uh, they have a two and a quarter inch door hardware kit that you can order along with your exterior door hardware. So it makes it very, very easy and economical to go up to that two and a quarter right. inch in thickness. Especially if it's a custom made door by a local builder, or some other custom cabinet company, they, you know, those exterior doors get pretty beefy. So now we talk about the common door widths and the common door thicknesses. Uh, let's jump over and just talk about some of the anatomy associated with uh, a jam condition on the door. Uh, this is the door slab. This piece right here is called a stop. This is the jam. Uh, and this is a piece of casing and casing. Those are variables. Uh, we've got a two by four condition there. Uh, you can write two by four on there. Get a little out of the angle here. So that's our wall condition. And as we talked in the other videos, that would be your jack and king stud typically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the dimension of our jam. So when you're ordering a door, you need to tell them how big your jam is. So we've got uh, gypsum wallboard here, a drywall and a half inch thick, a half inch thick on each side. Let's say this is an interior door condition. So we've got a two by four, which is three and a half inches. We've got a half inch of gypsum wallboard and a half inch of gypsum wallboard. So we end up with a four and a half inch dimension of our overall wall thickness. Well, when you order a jam, you order it an additional 16th of an inch. Right. So this is referred to as a four and nine sixteenths inch jam. And that extra 16th of an inch uh, takes into account a 32nd of an inch of a skim coat or a texture on the wall. And so that's why it flushes out really nicely. So the dimension that we talked about earlier is uh, of the width of the door is actually taken from the slab itself. Right. In addition to that, we need to take into account the jam, a little bit of space in here, so that you can plumb and true the door, because your framing could be off slightly. So that generally, that dimension there, from the slab to the framing, is one inch to inch and a quarter. It depends on your framer. A lot of times they do inch and a quarter, a lot of times they do one inch. On an interior condition, usually it's one inch, but yes. if it's a very large door, like we talked about with the eight foot high door, sometimes they will do a thicker jam or have an integrated stop in the jam, right. all these sorts of things <laughs> to add more strength to the condition. So the jam in this condition is uh, give or take three quarters of an inch uh, from, from there to there. In a large door, they may use a true one inch jam just to add some more strength to it. Or typically on exterior doors, it'll be a one inch just because they want that extra little bit of beef to make sure that the door doesn't have any issues because of the temperature variations between the exterior and interior of the house and weather and all those other considerations. Yeah, absolutely. On exterior condition as well you'll want a little more of a gap there so you can squirt some foam in there to seal it up nicely exactly so sure that, right. that gap is a little more important right um and you know if you've got a two by six wall of course this is going to be a six and nine sixteenths jam 
You know, sure. And there's just, very, there's different thicknesses of sheetrock as well. So you could sure. have five eighths sheetrock on one side right. or the other, depending on maybe a fire condition, uh, fire <laughs> rating condition. There's a lot of variables, but right. basically, you know, just just like everything else, you got to think about everybody involved and all the various parts and pieces, and analyze your sheetrock, your framing, your sheetrock to determine your overall jam dimension. Right. And that's mostly important when you're filling out your door and hardware schedules, as we talked about in the last vi video. Coordination is key with all of this stuff so that you spec everything right. You don't have callbacks in the job site or issues. Makes yeah. everything more smooth in the construction process and ultimately saves your client money. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if you're a homeowner watching this video, uh, just do your homework. Know all the parts and pieces associated with the doors if you're ordering the doors. That's why it's important to hire an architect. There you go. Uh, so basically that's your common door widths, your thicknesses, and uh, some of your condition uh, parts and pieces. I'm Lucas T. Shad, licensed architect in Livingston, Montana. I'm William Hicks, licensed architect in Litchfield, Minnesota. Remember, always hire an architect and always put box shells on every electrical junction box. Thanks. Thanks.